Welcome back to Black Cat Crypto Club. We have had some news this week on the BRICS nations uh, de-dollarizing. So we're going to get into all of that, what it means for crypto, what it means, you know, for the dollar, all of that stuff and more. But before we get into that, guys, I, I have some apologies that I want to make today. And the first one goes back to my last video, I believe, the one on the SEC lawyers being fired for perjuring themselves in that case against Debtbox, a cryptocurrency uh, company. And in that video, I kind of said, you know, don't, you know, you shouldn't always do what your boss says. If, if things aren't right, you know, you should really stand up for yourself. And I do hold that position. However, I did kind of come out and I, I kind of said, you know, if, if your job is making you do these horrible things, you shouldn't be at that job anyway. And I realized, you know, after I said that and after I posted that video, it just kind of grated on me. And I, I know things aren't that black and white. Now, I haven't gotten any bad feedback on that. And I've actually been told that I'm overthinking this, but I did want to apologize. I know that's not, it's not always that black and white. People need to do what they need to do for employment. Uh, and so I do apologize for that. If you took offense to it, my main point was that we do have more power as individuals than we think. So when you're thinking that you have no power, you have no way to really affect the world, you need to rethink that because we all have more power than we really think. And that was my main point. So there's my first apology. I do have another apology to make, but that actually kind of has to do with the news here. So let's get into that. We, on Tuesday, this broke, this news of BRICS, and it says BRICS is considering launching stablecoin for international trade settlement. Now, guys, if you watched my video on the halving that I did at uh, that live stream on the halving date, we talked a lot about BRICS. And I said, you know, the BRICS, if you, if you watch all the moving parts, it's likely that BRICS is going to use blockchain technology to launch a settlement coin that they can go off the dollar with. And it'll probably be backed by gold. And it's just all these parts coming together. If you saw that, you could see the whole picture coming together. But they hadn't announced that it was going to be anything blockchain before now. Now they are actually announcing that they are going to use blockchain technology to launch this stablecoin. Um, and it says speculations are that the stablecoin would be backed by gold, considering the huge holdings of BRIC, BRICS nations. And that is exactly what I was saying on that having date live stream. And so this is where my second apology comes in. Um, in that live stream, I said, you know, my every once in a while, you know, my pulse is right there on or my, my thumb is right there on the pulse. Other times it's far from the pulse. And this is actually what was going through my mind. This is a quote from a movie. Roll the clip. Here's the pulse. All right. And this is your finger. Far from the pulse, jammed straight up your ass. Say, would you like a chocolate covered pretzel? So, so that is what was going through my mind. And that's basically what I said on that live stream. And my apology is, I'm sorry for that image, guys. I, I apologize. But as is easily seen, Kevin Smith is a horrible, horrible influence on me. So uh, the only thing I can do is point my finger and blame Kevin Smith. So anyways, guys, getting back to this news, uh, this third point in this article 
This is absolutely ridiculous, guys. XRP enthusiasts, the XRP army, hint at BRICS leveraging XRP's upcoming stablecoin. And that is just absolute nonsense, guys. If, if you're an XRP army guy and you're watching this, or person, uh, girl, gal, whoever, and you're watching this, know that I'm not really talking bad about XRP. Uh, but guys, think about it. Think about it. You think China and India and Russia and Brazil are all going to go off the dollar because they're, they're sick of being sanctioned by the U.S. Uh, and, and having that dollar held weaponized against them just to get back into a stable coin of a U.S. based company who is beholden to U.S. laws and the U.S. government. You think they're going to trade in the dollar to get right back into something where they can be controlled by an American company? No, it's that is ridiculous. I mean, come on. Think about it for a second. Okay, so getting back into this, um, you know, basically the the Russian deputy foreign minister, Sergei Ryab, Ryabkov, who highlighted the benefits of that stablecoins could add to the group, um, just kind of goes into their thought on, on getting away from U.S. sanctions um, and the U.S. dollar and how how a stable coin is probably the technology that's going to be able to do that the best now listen when what does this mean for the dollar let's let's get into that it's not going to be great guys and and in in that having video we talked a lot about this and i actually said that it's a national security threat which really is true however you know as trump says going off the dollar for these countries to go off the dollar is an act of war it's not i mean who can blame somebody we have the us has literally weaponized the dollar and we do this by uh the swift payment system we freeze foreign foreign uh countries assets we seize foreign countries assets and these countries are sick of being bullied and having the dollar used against them so they're going to dump they're going to dump US dollars they're going to dump US bonds and it's going to saturate the market and inflate the dollar and weaken the dollar uh the DXY will crash on this and i i say crash I, it it's not going to go to zero by any means but it's not going to be good for the dollar and i don't like that like i i don't want to see the dollar crash i don't want you know i don't it's going to be horrible for our economy for my friends my family anybody that's in the dollar for me personally it i don't care personally because i don't Hold dollars. I am 100% into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Uh, so it doesn't, that won't really, I mean, it will affect cryptocurrencies in one way or another, but it's not going to affect me directly. It's going to affect me by seeing my friends, my family, and being in this economy, feeling that pressure on the economy. And I don't want to see that. But guys, again, we have done this to ourselves. When we decided to weaponize the dollar, we, we, we should have seen that we were shooting ourselves in the foot. Um, so we have no one to blame for this than, than us, uh, than the U.S. government. And so for Trump to say that it's a, a, a act of war and that he's going to go after these countries for going off the dollar is, is a bit ridiculous. And 
you know, Biden's no, no better. He's come out and said, oh, it doesn't matter if those countries go off the dollar. We believe that every country should have the freedom to use whatever payment they want, which is complete BS. You know, either he's too old and senile to know the effects of these countries going off the dollar, or he's just trying to be politically correct and come off as uh, something that the U.S. government absolutely is not. So, yeah, the, uh, they plan on going with a stable coin, but probably backed by gold. That isn't confirmed yet. But that is exactly what I was saying in that having live stream, which is crazy timing because this was not three days later after I said all those things that this story broke. Now, this stable coin in this article, it goes on and kind of says how, how well these countries are going to benefit from using a stable coin like this. And that is true. However, not necessarily true for the citizens of those countries. This will more than likely be a centralized stable currency, which doesn't really give your citizens the powers, the power that they need. Um, but that's kind of the case with a lot of stable coins. If you think about um, Circle, the USDC, Tether, USDT, um, a lot of the stable coins are centralized. So what that means is, you know, if the if the U.S. government says, well, freeze this wallet, says goes to USDC and says, freeze this wallet, maybe USDC gives up a fight and says, you need a warrant for that. Maybe not. Who knows? But essentially, they are permissioned blockchains. So they're not as self-sovereign as Bitcoin and some of these other coins. So just know that, however, getting into stable coins, when, when stable coins first came on the scene, it was right around 2020. And when they first came out, I was like, what, what is the deal with these? Like who wants to be in a cryptocurrency that is pegged to the dollar? It didn't make sense to me. And so, I, I have a feeling that maybe a lot of you kind of feel that way as well. But since then, I, I have completely reversed that thinking. I've seen how much stable coins actually benefit the blockchain and cryptocurrency um, arena, the uh, ecosystem. And it makes it makes things so much easier. It brings liquidity to, to the system. You can actually use these decentralized exchanges a lot easier. And I use stable coins all the time now. So it, it took a while for me to really understand the value of stable coins, but it does very much enrich this uh, cryptocurrency ecosystem. So we need to get in and look at this. Um, this is a kind of a um, forecast of what the stablecoin uh, future looks like. And it says the brokerage firm Bernstein recently projected that stablecoin market will hit three trillion in 2028. That's a massive number, particularly considering it's at $130 billion market at the end of December 2023. So that is a huge, huge market that is just going to be exploding. And we, and we can see that uh, in, in all of these companies that are coming forward now and making stable coins. We have XRP that is doing a stable coin now. We have going back over here, we have Wyoming. Guys, this is the state of Wyoming. And this was this was an article from January but or September. This was from September 2023. 
but they have since this article came out they have the you uh, the the wyoming government has approved this stable coin for their state now this brings up um a lot of questions a lot of issues and it says right here however the idea of state stable coins raises many questions how would they affect the monetary stability of fiat money and the power of the federal reserve could they be com compatible with central bank digital currencies do people really want to return to a system with state banks printing their own monetary notes so that is all a good point honestly um you know whether it be wyoming state uh, stable coins or central bank digital currencies all of that really plays against people um it it gives the government a whole lot more control than they've ever had and we'll just leave it at that but these stable coins will bring more and more adoption and people into the blockchain uh, community. So it will benefit other coins like Bitcoin. It's nothing that I would personally get into at all. Like I would not use a state uh, stable coin just personally. There are decentralized stable coins. Uh, one is MakerDAO, and I've kind of talked about this, but um, those are the coins that I am a little more interested in because they're permissionless, they're decentralized, um, and they're actually, MakerDAO is kind of a system where it's run by a few different coins, and it, it's run algorithmically, and it just kind of pegs it to the dollar. Um, so no one company is in control. Now, there's benefits to that, and there's benefits to these other ones. USDC actually has a yield that you can get, and so there's, there's benefits here and there for different ones. But here is another new one, guys. This is from about two weeks ago, and Sony has come forward and said that they are entering into the stablecoin arena. They're going to make their own stablecoin. And this is big because a company like Sony, this is go just going to drive adoption of cryptocurrencies, even though it's not directly related to Bitcoin or anything like that. This will bring people into the cryptocurrency community. Now, what these guys will do probably is they're going to be offering this stablecoin to buy their products and services. So you're going to be able to get $200 worth of Sony's stablecoin and you'll be able to go to the PlayStation Network and buy your games or buy a TV or a camera or whatever it may be. But the point is, guys, is this is going to bring people that have never ever been into cryptocurrency into this space and then they're going to slowly this is kind of a, a a gateway coin cryptocurrency coin if you if you will and it'll just bring more and more adoption more and more liquidity to the entire space so this is all exciting stuff guys but you know the the ultimate thing is going back to this BRICS uh, thing, is BRICS, all these nations, it's not even just the five nations anymore, guys. You know, it's uh, originally it was Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. And now, as I was talking about in that having video, um, Iran is part of BRICS now. There's a lot more companies joining more and more every day, and they're all sick of the U.S. dollar being weaponized against them. So they're all going to be dropping the dollar. They're going to be dropping U.S. bonds, and it's not going to be good. There is going to be some inflation in the dollar because of that, and there is no other, no better hedge against inflation than Bitcoin. 
I mean, get out of the dog, like at least have some contingency. Like you've got to have some of your, your savings outside of the dollar, whether that be gold or Bitcoin or whatever, just protect yourself because this is coming and it's not going to be great for the dollar. And you know, gold, gold is, is whatever. Let's jump over and just look at what gold has done. I mean, the fastest horse in the race is definitely Bitcoin, but this is what gold has done in the last 12 years, guys. And if this isn't the definition of sideways action, I don't know what is. I mean, let's just take, I mean, what percentage has, has gold gained over the last 12 years? 39%. <laughs> and I'm not even sure that keeps up with inflation because if you look back in 2022 right here, uh, it is now estimated that, you know, CPI estimated in, uh, inflation in 2022 at 9%, almost 10%. But guys, you've got to remember that CPI is supposed to be a needs-based inflation. However, in 1982 or 1983, they took housing out of CPI because they knew they couldn't make the numbers what they wanted it to be. So they took housing out of CPI. And now with CPI excluding housing, they can make that 2% work. Uh, that 2% goal, but they're, they're struggling with that even now. But if guys, if you go back to 2022 and, and factor housing into inflation, that 10% inflation rate that we saw in CPI actually jumps to 20% inflation. If you include housing, which is a need. So 20% inflation in just 2022, this 39% this that gold did over the last 12 years doesn't look so hot. So I don't know, uh, let's jump over and look what Bitcoin did in that same period. Now I'm gonna start, so if you watched um, when, we, when we did that gold, we went from the top of this red candle. This is where price started in this year and it dropped in this red candle. Now we go over to Bitcoin and it's a different thing. We have to start at the bottom of this green candle because during that year it went up this much. So let's take that measurement. Uh, same time period for Bitcoin. <laughs> I mean, this is just ridiculous to, to even compare. This went, Bitcoin in the last 12 years went up 477,435% uh, in comparison to gold's 39%. Um, but I mean, that's that's not a real good, um, comparison. Let's just throw that completely out the window because if you were getting into Bitcoin clear back in 2013, like I was, you were extremely early. You're still extremely early today. Um, we're, there's, uh, some information that's come out that actually says that Bitcoin right now is at the adoption that the internet was in 1997, guys. So if you think about that, I mean, I wasn't even using email in 1997. Um, I was about a, I was almost a senior, either a junior or senior in high school. And I did my, one of my senior papers or something on, I had to use the internet and do this paper and we didn't have Wikipedia back then. That would have been a, a godsend for this paper, but there was nothing like that. It was very early, very primitive. The, the information that was on the internet was 
pretty bad, to be honest. So we're we're so, so early in Bitcoin is the point. Um, but let's let's just do a few more measurements. Let's just take the measurement of what we did last year or this year. This is this year. We've we've had four months and we have gone up. What does that say? I can't even read it. Oh, let's do this again. This year we have gone up. 45% in four months versus gold's 39% over the last 12 years. Okay, so clearly Bitcoin is the fastest horse in the race. It's the best asset against inflation. So I don't know. If you want to be in gold, have at it, but it is very very dull compared to bitcoin and all i'm saying is you need to have that contingency get out of some of your dollars at least and be in something that is going to hedge you against that inflation because when bricks does decide to go off the dollar we are going to see some inflation like you've never seen before so anyways guys before we go as always, if you have not helped out the animals over at Emory Farm Sanctuary, please go over and help them out. It means a lot to me. I have no connection with these guys, but it is an issue that uh, really, really is dear to my heart. Uh, go over and help these guys out. A few dollars is all it takes, guys. And this is a small sanctuary, so any amount really goes a long way to help these animals out. So please go, go over and help them out. All of their information is in the description of the video. It means a lot to me. You know, there's PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, any of those works a lot or works well. And like I said, just a small amount really helps them out a lot. So anyways, guys, I will see you in the next video. Bye.